<laughs> I'm pretty warm in this. <sighs> when we think about the Allies defeating the Germans in World War II, what do we think about? We think about we won because we were superior uh, in our armies, in our spirit, uh, in the vehicles that we had, and the superior numbers as well. Yeah, those are all things, uh, part of the reason we won. One of the really important reasons we won was because of superior resources and pretty much the lack of petrol that the Germans had. Towards the end of the war, the Germans couldn't even taxi their Messerschmitt 262s off to the end of the runways. What they had to do is they had to pull them to the end of the runways to save petrol so they um, could actually go and fly and fight us. So petrol was really, really important. And one of the incredible things about World War II and how we were able to win it so well is due to this simple little object here today. Like most good ideas, uh, we nicked it from someone else. <laughs> so the jerry can that we all know and love looks like this here, doesn't it? This is a US Army jerry can, and this is the British version of the German jerry can. Now, the Germans started making this thing in 1937. Before the Germans got onto it and actually made a really good fuel can, um, people were trying all sorts of things. In Britain, we just used these flimsy little canisters, which apparently leaked up to 25% of the fuel that you put in them. So much so that if it leaked into the ballast of a ship, it could become a fire hazard and blow up. So the Allies hadn't really come up with a really good idea for how to transport petrol. And as World War II was going to be a mechanised war, moving petrol around was really, really important. So thank God the Germans came up with something and then we stole it. This is what they came up with here. This is the British Army version. It's a fantastic thing. Three handles on the top. Two guys can hold uh, one between them. You can carry four in, uh, on a single person, two in each hand. And the other thing about it is, it doesn't need any special tools to use it, okay? Before the Germans came along, you used to have to have a spanner or a can opener to get your fuel out, whereas the Germans just came up with a simple flip-top uh, design with a spout so you could pour it without spilling it. Now, when the Americans got hold of this design, unfortunately, they decided to make it worse. We've got this spinning lid here, which requires a donkey to, um, to pour any fuel out of it, so you have to have one of those if you don't want to spill it everywhere. To think how much fuel must have been spilt out of these in World War II is just mind-blowing. You're talking, you know, thousands, millions of gallons of wasted fuel. The other thing as well is they've got a rolled seam on them rather than the pressed seam, uh, which the British and German design has. The rolled seam can rust easily, unlike the pressed seam you get on this. So it's not quite as good. One of the really important things is that the British and the Germans lined their fuel tanks. So inside this tank is a red lining that keeps the fuel in there and stops it leaking out. Now this red lining is pretty important because the Americans decided not to use the lining in their jerry cans. And because of that, often with the rolled seam around the bottom, you get rust stored in there, which you don't get in the other cans. They do rust out, but not quite the same. So what that means is you can have a really nice jerry can can, like I found, but you can't use it on your Jeep today because the seams are rusted and it's got holes in it. So what I found is there's a system you can use to seal up an old jerry can or seal up an old fuel tank and you can use it again. It's called the Pour 15 tank sealant system and we're going to try that out today and we're going to see if it actually seals up my tank with a couple of holes in it so that we can use it again. So let's have a look at what we've got. Right peeps, what does our 54 quid get us then to clean up a jerry can? Well, instructions by the look of it. Fuel tank sealer, a metal prep, a cleaner degreaser. Um, you've got a de cleaner degreaser to remove gum and varnish. Okay, well that's not really a problem in a gas can that we use, so maybe we don't need to worry about that. But then it's got a metal prep, which I would thought would eat the rust, and it says it's a rust neutralizer, but it says it is not a rust remover. The problem with that is our gas can has got rust in it, and pretty much anything from a Jeep is gonna have rust in it. Let me show you an actual fuel tank I've got. This is the sort of thing you're gonna come up against, check it out, looks awesome from the outside, right? But it's mostly rust, like 90% rust, this thing. So, um, yeah, rust is a problem. You're gonna to have to get something in there to get rust out, okay? And I'm gonna use hydrochloric acid. Let's try that on my gas can, let's get that out. Here's our gas can, you can see with the, um, lovely original paint on there which is what we want to keep which is why we're going to use this one and seal it because we want to use this gas can because it's really really nice getting them in good condition like this is pretty difficult they often repainted and what have you and the paint's not as good as this so this is a really nice one but inside there's a bit of the old rusty rust going on Ta -da! hydrochloric acid this is really really strong stuff you use this for cleaning drains and things like that and when you take the lid off it big yellow smoke comes out of it, which if you breathe it in, <laughs> is no fun whatsoever. So you've got to be very careful with this, but it's really, really good at removing rust, but it's also really, really good at eating metal and everything, your skin and whatever. So you've got to be really careful of using this. So I've put some water in this and I've um, just diluted a little bit and we'll pour it in there, give it a swill around and let's see if it gets rid of some of that rust in there. The sealant reckons it clogs up 
pinholes. These look like pinholes to me, so I'm not going to seal them from underneath. I'm going to see if this can actually do it. But to stop all our hydrochloric acid escaping and dripping on my feet and everywhere it shouldn't, we'll just put a bit of speed tape on here to cover it up at the moment, and hopefully that'll keep the worst of it in there. This is what we hold aeroplanes together with, speed tape. So if it's good enough for an aeroplane, it's good enough for a couple of tiny pinprick holes. Right then, before we start with our old hydrochloric, just going to spray this with water because if we spill any anywhere, we don't want to damage this paint at all. So a bit of hydrochloric splashing on it when it's concentrated will eat it. Whereas if it's all diluted, anything falls on it will just be fine. So she's going to get a bath first. So here we go. Woo. Take that. Cool. Also, it means if I spill any anywhere, then I've got a load of water ready to go to douse it down. Oh, it's fizzing. Yeah, it's doing something, but I think we need to up the ante a little bit. I don't think that was enough, and I think that was too, that wasn't concentrated enough. Fortunately, I happen to have another bottle of the good stuff. This one isn't diluted yet, so we can put some neat stuff in there and see how that does, but this should be pretty, this is pretty nasty. Check it out, the um, hydrochloric showing up some bits you can't even see. Look, there are some pinpricks here, and look, the yellow, the hydrochloric's coming out. So bits you can't even see, it's showing up, which is really helpful to see um, how this is gonna work and seal it all up. So the hydrochloric is really good, but it's really dangerous, um, and you just gotta be really careful with it. I wouldn't recommend using it, but you can see it does work. Holy moly, check that out. Look at that, that's why this is so good for cleaning, right? Because you wouldn't be able to get a bead blaster in there or anything like that, so chemical cleaning is the way forward. But I'm gonna say, look, I don't recommend using this as a, as a way of cleaning them because I just think it's too dangerous for normal use, but you can get pretty damn good results with this. We won't leave it in there for any longer because we'll start making holes in the, uh, more holes than there already are in here. So let's, uh, let's get this stuff out of here. Well, that cleaned really, really well, very well. Actually, it cleans too well because it takes it down to such bare metal that it flash rusts almost immediately. And if you take the lid off, look, we can see it going a kind of orangey colour here. That's the rust forming already, but that's okay because when we do the second rust step, which has an inhibitor to stop it rusting again, that will remove that flash rust. So that's fine. Next thing we're going to do is uh, cleaner degrease. So it says half of this with half the same again and water. It's a potassium hydroxide apparently, this. Pour half in and then he'll go in the can and we'll swill it around like just like we did with the acid. And then this should degrease it ready for etching. Well, my wife doesn't know, won't hurt her. Oh, I've just had an idea. All the water is still in the bottom of this can, so rather than using the hairdryer, why don't we use my wife's second favourite appliance and heat it from underneath instead? It's a joke anyway, I do all the cooking. This is my favourite appliance. <laughs> Let's be honest, this is Nobel Prize level of ingenuity here. It would have taken years to get all that water out of those seams, those rusted seams. This is going to take a couple of minutes. I think we should go for the multi-pronged attack here. Ah. Right, next on the agenda is their version of what I did with the hydrochloric acid, which is their metal prep, which is just phosphoric acid and zinc phosphate. So this should eat that flash rust which is in there and it should also the zinc phosphate should leave a zinc coating inside it to protect it to prevent it flash rusting again so let's pour half of this in oh. right it says don't do it for longer than 20 minutes so i suppose we won't so let's pour it back into the bottle because apparently you could reuse this stuff you see the american design is not as good as the german or the British design, pouring it. <laughs> oh dear. Okay peeps, here comes the fun and possibly very dirty bit. We're gonna actually put the sealer in there now, which I imagine is some sort of epoxy or something like that. 
it should seal the whole thing, encapsulate those pinholes, encapsulate the seams, and keep all our lovely fuel in there, which is what it's supposed to do, okay? This thing's gotta be really dry, so it is really dry now, it's great. Open this up and give it a stir. Sort of feels like a enamel -y paint. I thought it would be thicker than this, but it's pretty, uh, it's pretty liquidy. So we're gonna just dump the whole thing in there, swirl it around, make sure it coats everything, and then you pour it out and bin it and that's it. Oh yes, oh no, someone's gone down the seam, damn. Right, time for the shake. Shout if you see any leaking out anywhere. We've gotta coat the whole inside, so I'm just gonna spin it around and hopefully it's in there doing its thing. <laughs> I hope so, otherwise we're just ruining a really nice gas can. Nothing's coming out of the pinholes yet. I've left that on there just to help it so it doesn't all leak out. It's not coming out there either, so, so far so good. Oh God, this is gonna take ages. Ugh. Now we've got to do is just leave it to dry for a week. Right, it's had a couple of days to try and uh, dry a little bit, but I tell you what, it doesn't look very dry to me. Let's have a look here. I'm just kind of worried about this. I'll touch the edge. Uh, uh, that feels dry. What about this top? Should we try it? Oh, <laughs> what? Oh, wow, that's weird. Hey, look at that. It's like, it's like glass, but it's completely dry. Whoa, that is so bizarre. I thought it was wet. Whoa, that's weird. It's like a completely like glass-like coating. Bizarre. Awesome. Well, it appears to be dry then. Let's go and test it. I think it's time for a bath. Should we see how successful this has been then? Now this might seem weird, but this is actually the way you're supposed to test these according to the tech manual for jerry cans. Would you believe there is a tech manual for jerry cans? Incredible. Anyway, you can test whether they leak or not by just putting one in a bucket of water and seeing if any hot um, bubbles come out. So we might get some leakage out of here because the sealant is old and I haven't changed that yet. John at Midwest Military, um, which you haven't been to before, is a really good site. He sells some really good stuff. He's sending me a new seal for it, so maybe it'll leak out the top. But let's, uh, let's have a look inside here and see if it leaks. Right, that's where our pinholes were. You can see some of it seeped out around the tape there, so hopefully that's all sealed up. Here we go. Don't bubble. Oh. Sweet. I don't see anything. I think we may have fixed our jerry can. Well, there you go. Apparently with the Pour 15 system, you can bring an old dead jerry can back to life, which is great. Now, it would be a hell of a lot easier if the Americans had just painted the inside of these with that red paint like they did on the British and uh, German jerry cans. But of course, these things were disposable. It wasn't supposed to be used 80 years later. It's supposed to be used for a couple of weeks. In June, uh, in August 1944, the Americans lost over 4 million or 4 million of these in one single month. So you can see these things are disposable. They're not supposed to last so long, but there you go. You can look after the old girls and get them on the back of your Jeep. So hope you enjoyed that. See you next time. Ah. <sighs>